French appeals judges have rejected a request to reopen an investigation into the 1994 assassination of Rwanda's president, Juvenal Habia Rimana, which sparked the genocide that killed 800,000 people. Families of those who died when Habri Yimana's plane was shot down, including his widow Agatha, will bring a challenge to Friday's decision to France Supreme Court. The appeals court in Paris had been asked to revisit a 2018 decision to throw out a probe against nine members and former members of the incumbent president Paul Kagame's entourage in a case that has poisoned relations between the two countries. A plane carrying Habia Rimana from Rwanda's Hutu majority was shot down in Kigali on April 6, 1994, triggering a 100-day killing spree targeting mainly members of the Tutsi ethnic minority, but also moderate Hutus. Joining us to talk more on this is Foreign Affairs Editor Agogo Obo. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, do we have great to join you also too a pleasure always okay please help us make sense why this trial is taking place in france so the the trial has happened because um the current french president um Emmanuel macron has sort of tried to find a way out of this um uh, hostility that has existed for several years within the rwandan genocide uh, between france and um rwanda and you know it's, it's it's a relationship that has served over the years. You've had reports uh, beginning from uh, when François Mitterrand was president in um, France in the 90s, uh, all the way to Sarkozy and then um, Emmanuel Macron. So um, the, the, the idea was they'll get to the bottom of what exactly happened. And then the families also got involved also to try to find a way to blame uh, President Paul Kagame for what has happened. But um, even though you've had several reports um, a court judgment now and all of that saying that um, uh, there is nothing to justify what happened between Paul Kagame, um, his RPF then, and the Rwandan genocide and the killing of Abirimana and um, neighboring Burundian president, uh, Sipen um, um, Yatamira. It will still go on and keep going on and on for, for maybe decades. No one will get to the bottom of it, even though there's evidence to suggest on both sides of the divide um, one accusing the other of what happened during the genocide. So um, they tried, they, these families came together to see if they could get justice uh, following the Rwandan genocide of their loved ones who died during the genocide. So it's, it's as simple as that, but then uh, the aftermath is as complex in understanding just what they were trying to uh, do at the end of the day. Do you consider the need to further appeal the assassination of the former president, looking at the healing that has taken place so far? Yeah. So the Liberation Day, which is marked on the 4th of July every year, uh, sort of cast in, in the minds of several Rwandans what exactly they went through. Uh, those over 100 days, I'm sure you've seen the movies, um, sometime in April, tell Rwanda, just uh, giving us a, a sneak preview into what people went through uh, more than 20 years um, ago. Well, almost 20 years. Well, more than 20 years ago, we're probably going to get here and anniversary very soon also to what had happened then. Uh, they had what they call the gachata. Uh, the gachata system uh, allowed people to uh, seek um, local um, uh, resolution to, the, to what happened during the genocide. And that was because uh, the UN system basically had filled out. I was speaking to a, a prosecutor uh, for the genocide who had sat in Arusha then in Tanzania. And he said, look, it's going to cost them a million dollars simply to prosecute one case. So... Um, the Rwandan government then said they had achieved a lot. Over, over 800,000 of those um, trials happened. And they did get some sort of reconciliation. Uh, wh whether they could have gone through the regular court system, sure, even up until now, those, those cases will still be going on. So the basic appeal, what will they seek to get at the end of the day, is still needs when you look at, at, at the wider picture of what lessons Rwanda has taught, uh, not just African countries, but the entire world, what reconciliation means and what it means to forgive and move on yeah well, forgiving is all good and well but the family lost someone so aside from seeking justice what else do you think can be done for his widow and other family members to appease them aside from saying let's <laughs> reconcile yeah it's going to be really difficult I, I'm, I'm thinking of the several cases um that they have to go through that chapter so it's, it's a matter of conjecture whether exactly they did get justice but 
uh, if you spoke to Paul Kagame's government, they would argue that many of the many of the trials couldn't have gone through Arusha and Tanzania. They just got a few of the kingpins from there. The court's um, um, judicial system would have been overburdened to handle it. And then, well, it was just between a rock and a half place. What do you do for the million? I mean, you look at that 800,000 people killed, you're looking at over a million people accused suspects. So it was, um, it was a mission impossible to go through the regular court system. So they set up uh, some sort of reconciliation within the, within the uh, Rwandan system to see if they could help and compensate people, like reintegrate people. How, whether that has worked, uh, people will look at what has happened in Rwanda compared to what is going on in neighboring countries, uh, DR Congo, um, what is going on in Burundi, and countries around Rwanda and see whether or not uh, the, the, the Rwandan peace model is better than what you have in Kinshasa, for example. So that's what they're probably going to be looking at. Um, and then uh, you, you have to understand that Paul Kagame has been there for over two decades now, and he's got his own enemies. There, there are those who argue that he's brought peace, prosperity, uh, look at Rwanda's GDP, look at Rwanda's economy where it is today. And there are those who say that, I, I mean, if you look at the numbers that happen on election, Paul Kagame never gets below 90% on election day when the results are out. So the opposition is there. Most of them, uh, unfortunately, outside the country, haven't been able to um, form, it, form it into a real block to show some real sort of um, uh, opposition against Kagame. All right, uh, Mr. Agogo. Oh, well, thank you very much for joining us and sharing uh, some insight on the matter. Thank you very much.